All right, today we're going to do a complete restoration of this Shark Navigator uh, NV352. This will work for just about all Shark Navigator series. I just bought this one used, and I'm going to restore this for resale. But others of you might be just looking to restore it to its optimal performance. So I will start with the issues that will get you to that point. Um, but then I'll continue doing the deep clean kind of things that I will be doing to get this as good as it can be. Uh, just so you know, with a NV352 here uh, and most shark navigators of this type, the main points of actual replacement, I mean, for the most part, these sharks are not going to break down in any kind of major mechanical way. But the things to look for that you might need to actually buy replacement parts for are these latches right here. Um, this HEPA cover seal sometimes breaks. Uh, the tiny wheels, the two wheels on the bottom here sometimes break. And this hose, uh, particularly right here at the handle, sometimes gets holes in it. So the replacement parts, if you have a shark that's broken, Occasionally replacement parts will be needed, uh, like this uh, hose handle piece. I'll put links in the description for the common replacement parts, but for the most part, you're going to be able to clean these and restore them without buying any replacement parts. So, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is clean the filters. I'm going to take these latches off, and oh my goodness, does this need some cleaning. So we're going to take this out, I need to get my gloves first. And these uh, filters and we'll give them a nice cleaning. All right so I'm going to be running some hot water. I'll speed the film up here in a second after I show you what the process is. Basically I'm just gonna I'm trying to get water to soak into this filter and then when it does I squeeze it out and try to get some more water in. See of course the water is going to be very dark at the moment very dirty filter but you're want you're going to want to repeat this process over and over until this filter runs clear until the water is as clear as you can get it okay when you get it about as clean as it can get you want to squeeze out any excess water from the filter and you want to set this aside to dry between 24 and 48 hours. There are two more filters, and I'll show you what we can do to clean these. They're a little bit different. There is this filter underneath here, and then there's the HEPA filter in here. Um, you can do essentially the same thing with this one that we just did with the larger foam one, but we're going to actually just take this one outside and beat, beat it out. It really doesn't get that clogged, usually and it's not really a major source of loss of suction anyways. It's, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I got my gloves on. You can put like uh, little grocery bags on your hands if you want, but basically this is all we're doing. And you can see that it actually restores its color pretty quickly. The next probably most important thing for people that are interested in restoring loss of suction is this metal grate in here. If this is clogged, which this one is just caked on with uh, dirt and debris, uh, this will completely uh, lose, you'll lose suction if this is not uh, free of debris. So the best way I know how to do this is either with something like a toothbrush or a green scrubby pad, but you want to free this entire grate of debris. All right, so we're outside once again. I got my green scrubby pad, and we're just gonna work this over that grate. If you can see it, it's already starting, you can see the difference between those two perhaps already. There is another filter here, the HEPA filter, which you get just by taking this cover off and pulling it right out. Um, these are kind of expensive to replace. I'll put the, a link in the description, but um, they can be $25, $35 to replace these. 
you can clean them a little bit with a little bit of elbow grease or if you have like some compressed air it might work this one is not bad at all really um, but there aren't a lot of ways to clean this you don't want to wash this under water like any of the other filters we have done all right, so the next thing that will impact your suction and performance of the vacuum is the brush roll. So on the sharks, it is easy to take the top part off. And normally when I'm cleaning a brush roll, this one is pretty nasty all around. But normally I will not even take this cover off. I'll just use scissors to or a razor blade to make cuts on here and pull this off. In this particular case, it's pretty bad, and I am going to actually take the whole thing apart. So, in order to do that, so in order to take this apart, we need a Phillips head screwdriver, and you also need to pop these wheels off. Um, so, you need to get in there. This one's a little rusted. And. Pretty nice and rusted. That's going to have to be cleaned off. And they just pop right out. They pop right back in. Not in really great shape, though, are they? And the reason you do that is because there are screws down here that you need to take off. In this case, are covered with all kinds of debris. So I'm going to take these screws off here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there are two more, not these two that you can see right off, but two down here in the well there. So there's all together six, seven, eight screws that you'll need to take off. And I'll go ahead and fast forward here. All right, I think I have taken or at least loosened all the screws. The best way I know to take this off it's going to be hard the first time. I usually grab from the bottom, crack that seal there, and that usually gets you right in there. There's a cord connecting this to the top, so just be a little bit careful. You're going to have your screws fall out when you do this, if you didn't take them out. And here we go. So inside, we're going to actually take this brush roll off to inspect the belt, to clean some of this stuff up, but it's going to make this a little bit easier to clean up too. So to pull the brush roll off, you just put even pressure. There's two slots right here. So just evenly take that out, unhook it from the belt, and we'll qu quickly go clean this outside. I uh, usually just use a pair of scissors and cut any kind of hair in there off and just start pulling it off. Most of this discoloration on these will come off uh, with like a microfiber towel and rubbing alcohol. But that is pretty good for getting the debris off of that. The next thing you want to do is take off all the hoses and look into everything you can to look for blockages. This one is clear, but so many of these are not. Uh, this is completely blocked. And this is oftentimes people's cause of loss of suction. If you have a complete blockage here, uh, there's also going to be a block here, completely blocked. So in that case, in this particular case, we're able to get most of that out just by poking it out. All right. Normally with the interiors of these hoses, it's not that big a deal. But this one is just so uncommonly bad, uncommonly dirty, that some serious stuff has to happen. So I'm going to pour some Dawn in here. And I'm not too worried about any of the parts on here rusting or anything. They're going to be dried off. There's not a lot of metal in here anyways. So I'm going to let that soak for, let's say, 30 minutes or an hour. Then I'm going to come back with the hose and spray the interior down as best as I can. Whatever the result of that is, is how clean that's going to be. It's just, there's no real good way to clean the interior of those hoses. So this is basically to try to loosen up some of that dirt and debris uh, before I spray it down. 
All right, so I'm now gonna go through a lot of these parts and clean them with rubbing alcohol and a variation of a microfiber cloth or a scrubby, whatever it takes. Um, just a few notes on that. When you do clean, um, it's important to look around this motor for debris. A, a big part of restoration is clearing this. Sometimes debris gets caked up in here. Also, I should mention that you should take the belt off and inspect it. Uh, make sure there are no cracks. Make sure it's not easily giving. Basically, you're just doing a visual inspection. But basically, these are cheap to replace if there's anything at all wrong with this. Uh, but this one looks okay. I should note that in this case, these wheels were so bad that I had to remove them in order to wash them uh, thoroughly. In order to do that, you need to take off the two screws here and then start to pry them off with a screwdriver. There's You can kind of push the dowel in a little bit that way. They just pull off once you get those screws off. you got to put some pressure to them. So I had to take these outside and uh, dip them in that bath for the hoses and then use the green scrubby to get them clean. The bottom and the top of this one also are pretty terrible. So terrible, in fact, I think I'm going to use the same process. I'm going to go dip this in my solution and use my green scrubby pad to get as much of this cleaned as I can. Okay, honestly, this is just about so bad that I don't think I can clean this effectively uh, with it attached to all the electronics. So I'm going to go ahead and take everything off of this. And to do that, I'm going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm going to take off the control board. And then there's a screw right here on this switch. As far as the motor here, we're going to just lift it right out of its holder here. Move this whole thing aside. This little switch in here can stay. All right, we're gonna go clean this outside. All right, we're getting near to the end here. Uh, I didn't show the scrubbing and the hosing outside, so I'll just briefly explain what I did. Uh, like for these parts, the bottom parts, um, I basically just dipped them in that solution of Dawn and water that I had. Uh, scrubbed a little bit with the scrubby pad, but especially around the difficult areas, but mostly got it off with a hose. Uh, and you do want to let these dry. Try to dry them as much as you can and then let them sit. There's not a lot of metal parts in here to rust. On the bottom one, there is one little piece that has metal. So just try to keep it dry and make sure it's dry before you put it back on. Now comes the last few parts. And the dust cup is probably the biggest thing that you'll want to clean. Now I could do the same thing here. I could go uh, dip it in suds and then wash it. But with this, I basically just like the standard approach of rubbing alcohol and these microfiber towels. Um, there are some parts that are hard to get to. The way that I hold it is kind of like this with both attachments open. Um, you want to pay special attention to around this seal. So when you're cleaning, make sure you get around the seal pretty good with your alcohol solution. Around this seal pretty good. Other than that, it's just cosmetic stuff and it can get as clean as you want. I should also mention that I did not show me spraying out these hoses. Um, basically, I took them out of that solution and I put the spray hose, the water hose down there and sprayed as best as I could. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can try to separate this out a little bit when you're spraying to get a little bit in between those cracks, but there's only so much you can do besides replacing these uh, in terms of cleaning the interior. All right, so let's get started. For getting down all the way to the bottom of this, I suppose if you had small hands, it would be a little bit better. What I do is kind of push the towel down there, bunch it up so it basically covers that bottom, and then do a circular motion, you can get most of that. 
this bottom part here can be a little tricky. Uh, toothbrush works okay for these. We showed I tried to get some of this stuff off with the green scrubby pad, but some of these crevices here just too small for anything except for with bristles. I'm sure there are other types of brushes you could use. Looking pretty good indeed. All right, so when you get close to being done with this, there's a few areas that remain dirty, particularly right here underneath there. Let me get this part first so we can see it better. Um, I have, the only way I can find to clean that is by taking microfiber towel. In this case, it's already pretty soaked in alcohol, but I guess you could use vinegar or just water and pulling it through and that gets it pretty good in this particular case I'm using a screwdriver to get a particularly difficult area with the bunched up rag Okay, and that's what we have. It needs to be maybe a little polished and stuff in places, but as far as the cleaning aspect of it, I think it's all done except for just a few little pieces here and there. All right, we're gonna put Humpty Dumpty back together again here.